Hi, this is Trent with RicesForDinner.com. Today, we're going to talk about charge ports. The other day, uh, I saw a question on Facebook that uh, somebody was asking how to um, how to tell if their charge port had gone bad, uh, or whether they should change the charge port or the battery, or whether or not the charging circuit in the phone was being affected. And a lot of people were quick to jump on change the port. And um, I'm here to tell you that's not the first thing you should do. Uh, when trying to figure out whether or not your phone is actually charging, um, if you have a multimeter, you could obviously check the voltage of the battery, charge it for a little while, recheck the voltage, and compare. But um, I found this cord at Best Buy and it is an MFI certified cord for Apple Lightning devices and um, I'll talk more about that in a moment but the neat thing about this cord is when you plug it in and go to charge a device then LEDs in the cord chase each other when the device is charging and you can see the little lightning cord, or lightning bolt here um, telling me that the phone is charging. But on top of that, I know it's charging because these little lights are chasing each other. Now I've got two other phones here. They were both water damaged. And one of them, if we plug it in, these phones have already been cleaned, by the way, and they're still dead. I need to further diagnose it. But you can see this one is charging so I know the circuit the charging circuit of this phone is actually working and on this phone the, the lights either don't move or barely move and then they turn off and that tells me this phone is not charging and I know the batteries are connected to both of these phones but this one could be considered more dead than this one. At least this one is showing some signs of life, even though neither one turn on. This is my personal 5S, so I know it works. And when it charges, the lights chase. So that's a simple thing you can do to help you understand whether or not um, your charge port might be bad, your battery might be bad, or the charging circuit of the phone might be bad. Um, once you've tested that simple thing, another thing you could do is take a certified MFI charge cord, which is basically an Apple certified cord, and uh, let me pull up an, an image here. If you see this image on your package, and it must say made for iPod, iPhone, or iPad, then it's part of Apple's certification program and should be a trustworthy cord. If you do not see this image, or if it says use with iPhone, iPad, or whatever, or made to work with, or any other wording besides made for iPad, iPhone, iPod, iPhone, iPad, with these little images, then it's not a certified Apple cord. And you'll see a lot of those at gas stations, and they're usually pretty cheap, a couple of bucks. Um, the problem with those is they don't regulate the voltage going into the phone very well, and they send little voltage spikes through the charging circuit, which eventually burns it out. Um, you may have heard the term U2IC. Uh, that refers to a microchip in the phone, um, in the charging circuit of the phone, that eventually burns out with cheap charging cords. Um, but if you have a known good MFI certified charging cord and you plug it in and you can flip it over and plug it in the other way because they work either direction and it still doesn't work, then the second thing I would personally do before changing the port is to take a battery that I know works and disconnect the battery in the phone and then just simply plug this battery in place. You know, not take the battery out of the phone, just plug in a new battery that you know works. And then plug the known good charge cord back in and see if that makes a difference. If the charge cord doesn't make a difference and changing the battery doesn't make a difference, 
then you can move on to changing the charge port. This is an, a port for a 4S, not a, a 5 series foam, but it doesn't matter. The principle is the same. Inside all charge ports, you have little tiny connectors. Those connectors run through little microscopic wires to another connector, and this mounts to the phone's logic board. So essentially, a charge port is nothing but wires. This is a charge port for a Samsung Galaxy. You have wires on the outside where the cord connects, and then those wires translate to these little tiny connections on the inside. Often the Galaxy port goes bad because the solder joints break here, but unless there is actual damage on the outside of the charge port, and you can see bent pins or something is jamming this up, odds are the charge port is not the problem because it is literally just wires. And before these wires burn out, something else is going to burn out inside the phone. Now on an iPhone charge port, you have other things like a microphone. Um, on the 5 Series, you have the headphone jack, um, things like that. But the charge port itself is literally wire to wire. And there's nothing in between that's going to burn out faster than the circuit in here. So if the charge port is not bad, if there's no physical damage, then it shouldn't be the first thing that you change. However, you can disconnect the charge port from the logic board in the phone and then simply plug on a new charge port and then plug your cord into that and test it without having to take the port out of the phone. And you can't do that on a Galaxy this is a solder repair on, on this particular Galaxy. There are some that have a little flex cable that you can change it that way. Um, but on this one, this is solder only. On this one, you can disconnect it from the phone, plug that in, and then check it. So if you've checked the cord in both directions with a known good cord and it doesn't work, check the battery with a known good battery and plug that cord back in. If it still doesn't work, then check the port. And if it still doesn't work after that, then you can assume that there is something damaged on the charging circuit inside the phone. And believe it or not, sometimes that's as simple as somebody taking a small flat blade screwdriver to remove the battery connector and they end up prying off a little tiny um, resistor or a capacitor or something along those lines next to the battery connection. So when taking this off, I find it sometimes is easier to use your fingernail. Um, the flat end of a nylon spudger is helpful. If you decide you are going to use the screwdriver, just make sure you're not going down and then prying up. Just try and get under the lip a little bit and then pry it up. If you go down and then pry it up, you're, you're going to scrape a component off of the board more than likely. So aside from that, the main point in this video is to show you this cord. This is one of the cheapest methods for diagnosing a battery problem there is. So like I said, on this phone, it's water damaged, it's dead, it's been cleaned, charging circuit is working the battery is charging. So now I need to figure out why it's not powering on. On this phone, same thing, water damaged and dead, but you can clearly see the charging circuit is not working. So I like this cord for that reason. That was the point of this video. I'll talk more about the, the charging circuit and further diagnosis and repair in another video. Thanks for watching. This is Trent with Rices for Dinner.com.